All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Team here, and this is BXJS livestream. And uh, I finally got my hands on GitHub Copilot. If you never heard about it, it's the new AI for pair programming. Well, it's, uh, I mean, <laughs> AI is, you know, a strong word, but it's basically the very, very smart autocomplete from GitHub. And I am quite excited to try it, to be honest. Hey, Wise, welcome to the stream. Yes, you are first indeed. All right, so uh, GitHub Copilot is a technical preview. You can only get there if you sign up for the test and they let you in, basically. As far as I understand, there's like a few thousand people right now who are testing it. And uh, I guess I got lucky enough to get in. I'm honestly not sure about the exact numbers, but I have seen a lot of previews of these things. I have seen a lot of discussions about this thing. And uh, honestly, I'm really excited about trying it out. Um, from what I understand, it's basically built on the OpenAI GPT-3 model, or rather retrained model that uses the GitHub open repos, like public repos to train the GPT-3-like model on them. And uh, yeah, that actually sounds absolutely amazing. And I'm very, very curious to see how that will work out. Uh, hey, Sereno, welcome to the stream. All right, so as I said, I got the access. We are gonna be trying JavaScript today, um, I have a few things I wanna try in mind, basically. Um, I already installed it, so you know, it's it's actually uh, in my VS Code now, I probably should start it. We're gonna try it first on the um, website. Yes, I trust the authors of this repository, thank you very much. So let me see, so we got activating extensions. We should see the logo of it at some point once it activates somewhere in the bar. Uh, where is my, where's my code? Wait a second, code uh, pilot, oh, pilot. Ah, there you go, there's the logo. Okay, so it takes quite a few, I don't know if it's my computer or something, but lately uh, VS Code started, you know, getting slower and slower for me. Maybe it's because of my VSL installation is growing progressively with the number of projects I'm doing. I probably should upgrade at some point because this machine is like, five years old or something. So not, not the latest hardware. Uh, hey, Major Malfunction, welcome to the stream. Good to see you as well. Yes, it's been it's been quite a while since I've streamed. Uh, I've had some, you know, not mm, weird things happening in my life. Let's just put it this way. I'm hoping all of that can resolve sooner than later and I can back to can get back to streaming a bit more consistently. But um, yeah, let's, uh, let's give it a shot. So um, yeah, last time we worked on BXJS website and we did this tweets thing, right? That gets the Twitter statuses from the timeline and then uh, sorts them, right? So we, we map them into the tweet data and then save them, or we didn't actually save them. So one thing I noticed, uh, like one thing I think is gonna be relevant to the GitHub Copilot is basically the more popular the library you are using is, the better suggestions you will get, right? Because the public corpus will contain more usages of this specific library. But uh, let's give it a shot, right? So we got our um, admin client. I believe this is our, I think it was the uh, GraphQL client. So it was the, uh, what do you call it? The URQL, right? Um, the question is, will it actually suggest? So we got our admin clients. I honestly don't remember. So it doesn't, no, it doesn't understand that this is a URQL thing. So one mutation. Where are my suggestions, pilot? How do I, how do I get them? Globally for JavaScript, disabling. No, 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 I don't want to disable them. What is the, uh, that's a wrong button. Um, there was a button to get all the suggestions, but I honestly don't remember it. I know I saw it somewhere. Um, there was docs somewhere here. GitHub Copilot getting started guide. There we go. Okay, uh, seeing your first suggestion. Okay, we don't see any suggestion here. I don't know why. I guess it just doesn't know what to suggest here. So we're gonna see if we can. Okay, alt and brackets toggle the suggestions. That's also not what we want. Getting more suggestions. Uh, da -da -da, and GitHub Copilot will say control enter. Okay, so if I hit control enter, there we go, synthesizing, okay. Okay, so this is what it suggests doing here. And where's the, oh, 
Holy shit. <laughs> so, okay, why am I not getting this in line is num question number one, but do you see this? It literally wrote the query for me. <laughs> like, wait, what? Are you, are you serious right now? Um, I, I, what? Okay, I mean, let's just, you know what, let's accept the first solution. It literally, so we got ID, we got account, we got text, we got date, and we got length. And uh, yeah, I, what? Okay, I would use obviously the um, sync instead of promises, but are you for real right now? Okay, so we don't need that. And we don't need that. I am, um, this is insane. Uh, hey, Aaron, welcome to the stream. It literally wrote the query for me with the correct properties. And it even uses the tweet input. Uh, I think this is actually wrong because I don't have that type defined in the uh, GraphQL, right? But, <laughs> but what is this magic? Okay, this is, I'm, I'm terrified, but also this is very awesome. Um, hey, just just Ron, welcome to the stream. All right, this is kind of mind blowing. Um, I should really be working, but I have to see this. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I, I honestly, I or I'm already blown away by what I've seen. Try that again, but declare it with a wait and see if it shows the solution. Oh, that's actually a good idea. Let me try that. So you are suggesting basically saying result. Oh, wait, so I suggest that, right? And then I say, okay, give me suggestions. And uh, yes, it does. Yes, it actually does. And actually even suggests adding it to the JSON. So this is, <laughs> this is insane. Uh, how did I get access? Uh, I mean, I just, so you can go to the Copilot website and there is a button sign up. And if you press it, uh, it basically says, hey, join the wait list. I clicked the button and uh, I was lucky enough to get the access yesterday evening or something. So yeah, uh, as easy as that. But it like, uh, why is your suggestion absolutely worked? You just say, okay, I want to wait and uh, it actually works. Uh, what keyboard shortcuts are you pressing to show the suggestions? Yeah, so essentially, if you get the suggestion in line, which for some reason, I guess maybe I have to press enter. Yeah, so there are suggestions, it just shows them line by line instead of showing the whole thing for some reason. I, uh, can I, whoops, that is a wrong button. So there's, um, why are you not working? I guess there are no other suggestions. Yeah, okay. So it does show this suggestion, but for whatever reason, it doesn't show. Um, ten, yeah, there you go. So I can toggle between like two of them. It suggests the query. Uh, essentially, yeah, you can get suggestions by pressing. So you see them in line. In this case, it shows only one line for whatever reason. But if, if you hit Control Enter, it will open this split pane and synthesize top 10 solutions. Uh, so this is control enter and I think it works on any bit of code basically. Um, it's worth noting that essentially I think this is not deterministic. So every time you hit control enter, you will get new suggestions, which, you know, I think it's fine, but just keep that in mind. Okay. Anyway, this is, this was terrifying, but it also doesn't seem to suggest things in line, which is something I wanted to see. So let us try, uh, let's try doing some react stuff, I guess. So we got the fact that it wrote GraphQL query from our data structure is just crazy. Like how much can it infer? Holy shit. Okay. So we got, I don't know. What do we have? We have search for example, right? So we got this thing. We got the debounce. Um, what if, what if I, what if I erase this? So we have this handle search thing, right? What if I say, okay, so we kill that. Say const handle and 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 um handle search, right? Why do you say use memo? Uh, whoops. No. Why am I I almost pressing the wrong button. Okay, that is it only suggests use memo. Okay, why is it okay <laughs> let's try I guess. Um 
Okay, that that is not. Yeah, wait a second. What are you doing? So, <laughs> what did it just write? Wait a second. So, if there is a debounce, we're gonna clear it. Then we're gonna use ref. Uh, that doesn't seem correct. <laughs> okay, no, that 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 obviously doesn't work. Let's try this. Let's try it like this. Okay, so this in this case, this this is definitely wrong. Um, this looks correct actually. So there's the third. No, wait, that's the first. Okay, so it dropped the first solutions that it wrote. So there is our component and there is our handle search. So if there's a debounce, it will clear timeouts. Then it uh, set timeout sets. Yeah, that's actually exactly what we had, right? So if I accept this, it rewrote a bunch. Or I guess it reformatted. Oh, oh. Oh, it inserted it. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, okay. This needs a bit of work, but it actually did suggest the correct thing, which is uh, uh I'm I'm gonna th I'm thinking maybe I should just create a new repo and play around with like Next.js or something, because it seems like so basically it seems to not just suggest you things based on the corpus it is trained on, but also infer stuff from your current context, which is kind of awesome, but since the context of VXJS website is messy as hell, it might not be the best thing. Um, let me think for a second. So we can, what can we do? We can, uh, let's make a new, let's say next test, uh, next copilot test. I mean, I won't commit that or anything. I think I'll just, um, ta -da 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 -da, next JS. So essentially I wanna see how good is, um, how good it works essentially with a blank new project and if it can like suggest doing uh, things for me. Next, I probably should have done this in the parent directory, but that's fine. Okay, uh, do, 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 come on. So there's, there's a few things I wanna try essentially. Uh, yes, please move that. Next compiler test, yes. Uh, yeah, right, 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 test. One, let's call it this way. Very, very good <laughs> project naming. Uh, okay, so this is our new Next.js uh, package. I should probably increase the size. Yes, I trust. Should increase the size of this thing. There we go. Okay, so we got our index page. And I guess let's uh, let's create, yeah. So we say we wanna move the footer, right? Components. Gonna say okay, footer JS. And I'm gonna say export default function footer. And where are my suggestions? So it seems like again, it might be just my machine lagging. Uh, as I said lately, my VSL instance for whatever reason is behaving a bit slow ish. Probably because again, my machine is not exactly the fastest one, but uh, I, I, yeah, I really feel like I need to upgrade. There we go. So now it actually suggests our stuff. And uh, this, uh, okay, so it's actually a footer from React Starter Kit, which I guess works. Uh, okay, so you can get, yeah, so <laughs> this is like a bunch of existing footers from um, starter kits, which I guess is fine, right? So there's like MIT license in there. Um, okay, sure, why not? Um, so how do I accept it again? Uh, tab, right, there we go. Part of React Redux, okay. I mean, the fact that it was able to generate that is, is also kind of crazy. I can see why some people would complain about like, hey, it's stealing the code, which is not exactly the truth. So I'm guessing, you know, this, this first of all, this code probably is not unique enough to be considered copyrighted or whatever, right? And second of all, it's not exactly what it's doing by reproducing the code. So, but yeah, anyway, this is a discussion for a separate, um, for a separate, uh, Huh, separate video, basically. Let me just, I'm gonna replace the footer over here, save that. And then here, I'm just gonna say footer. Yes, just open that. Okay, so it even suggests this minor things. Okay, ah, we need the image over there. Okay, that's a good point. Right, I don't have ASLIN configured, so I'm probably gonna have a lot of things. Uh, let me have a look at the chats. And now we need to jump in and test it out properly. I can wait writing add functions to test it. So yeah, so I think my perspective on the whole thing is that uh, first of all, 
it's like even <laughs> the the GraphQL example we did still blowing my mind. But the thing is that you are not 100% sure the code it generates will work correctly, right? So in, in this manner, test-driven development or even just the presence of tests that actually ensure your code works correctly become increasingly more important, which is, uh, yeah, which is kind of, kind of interesting. I wonder where, where this will, like, because as a tool, I can see this is going to be immensely useful, but I wonder where it will take the development as, you know, the sort of, the process in general because even stuff like writing comments is now more important right because it's like okay um <laughs> i don't know why it's chinese but that's fine so what what wait, wait, wait a second what <laughs> um i what why is this okay you know what that's fine so we can we can go like hey get username from property or oh, from yeah yeah from local storage there you go right and then you get the you can basically get an implementation strictly from the comment, which is just insane. And as a person who typically writes comments after I'm done writing my code, as in, because, you know, majority of time where I work with stuff, it's like mostly R&D things where I have to first figure out how to do things and then document them. I feel like this might actually change the way I code. And, um, yeah, uh, it's 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 a bit weird to think about all of that. If it's stealing code, then I'm also stealing code every day. This is this is also what I like along the lines of what I was thinking. Essentially, the the way that the copilot learned on the public code is very close to how the human would learn, right? So you would like digest a bunch of things and then think, okay, hey, I remember this implementation from whatever time, so I will just write it down the way I remember, right? But People arguing, you know, like because machine has effectively an ideal memory, is going to reproduce the same code, which I've read some pieces from the lawyers or people who are more versed in like basically the law side of things. And it seems like the what Copilot produces doesn't actually, uh, doesn't count as license violation essentially because there is no offender from what I understood, like one of the points, which is kind of curious. Uh, hey, Tolomidia, welcome to the stream. It has been a while indeed. Um, I've been trying to follow readme-driven development a little uh, where I write the comments first. It takes some effort to change. Yeah, absolutely. Like you have to think differently about the way you code, right? But I think with the copilot in general, you're going to think differently about the way you code anyway because the the fact that it can produce code from nothing is just insane. Like I hit enter and it suggests, hey, you maybe you want to import component. And it's kind of there, right? I don't really need component because I don't use class components, but because class components are still so prevalent in the public code, this is the most common thing to follow the imports that are alongside the React functions, JSX and other stuff, right? So it makes perfect sense. I'm also curious to see how this will evolve because like they trained it one time and now it produces one set of results, but you know, the code evolves, the, there's a new libraries, there are new things. And I'm curious to see what will happen when we get the next React, for example, right? So it's it's not going to gain traction immediately, obviously, but like two years in when everyone is hyped about it, will the copilot be retrained enough to uh, suggest the snippets for it? Or how are they going to handle it? Because it seems like an insane undertaking to retrain the model on the whole corpus, like every whatever. I, I'm not sure. Can, can, is there, can you do it incrementally? Like is GPT-3 like models allow you to incrementally add data to data set? Is that something that works? I think they should, right? So theoretically, if you think about the machine learning approach, I think it should, but okay. I mean, I'm not a machine learning expert by any sense. So let's, let's not dive into that topic because I have no idea what I'm talking about. Seems to be indexing my own code a bit too. Have you found that? Yes. So it basically uses the, uh, it, index your code base and uses this as the, um, what do you call it? The context for whatever code it produces, right? So if you have some, as the um, GraphQL example that I did in the beginning demonstrated, basically understood the, not just the scope context, but also the project context perfectly and produced exactly what we wanted. So it understood that it was a GraphQL client. It understood that it needed a mutation query. And it also understand the properties that the object in the scope had, which is just mind blowing. Transfer learning. Thank you very much. Yes, Ali, this is, this is exactly the thing. Like I am, 
I work with people who are really good at machine learning and I build things with what they tell me to do essentially. <laughs> so I kind of understand how machine learning works, but I'm really bad at 90% of theory essentially. Uh, but yes, um, uh, anyway, so we tried React. Uh, let's try, I don't know, let's try doing something more interesting. So let's say we want a component that's, I don't know, let's say like button uh, increment or something, right? So let's try something simple. Okay, export, uh, no, 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 wait a second. Export default, um, create new button that increments on click. You're gonna suggest me something, copilot? It's gonna take it. So yeah, so this slowness seems to be definitely related to my VSL instance. Uh, and this is not copilot exclusive. So I have the same issues with, um, what do you call it, DSLint. So it tends to be quite slow for me too. Again, it might be purely because my computer is like five years old. And even though back then it had a pretty decent hardware, right now it's, it's relatively slow. Okay, let's trigger. Okay, yeah. So yeah, again, this is the one of the possible issues with it, because majority of public code still uses the old react components. This is what's going to be dominating the suggestions, right? Nobody writes components like this anymore. But it's still going to be here in suggestions purely because hey, this is what is popular. And this is what is going to be weighted more than everything else essentially, right? And it doesn't even have any hooks implementations which is a bit of a shame, honestly. But I guess if we were to suggest for default function button, if I were to suggest and basically say, okay, const, yeah, there you go. So now it basically suggests us exactly what we need. A handle click, okay. Yep, yep, okay. <laughs> this feels ridiculous. It's just writing everything for me. This is mind blowing. I mean, okay, done. There you go. I I j was just sitting there pressing tab. Literally, the only thing I typed was export button function, right? Function button, and then just const value, and everything else was auto completed by the copilot. <laughs> this is bonkers. I'm sure as once many users start using copilot, it will be trained based off what the most users choice. Uh, that yeah, I mean that they probably have some sort of a reinforcement learning in there. But I wonder, like, I, I'm curious how, how it will, essentially, as I said, you know, my main question here is how, how will it develop further and how it will um, evolve, I guess, from here on, because the tech itself is mind-blowingly cool. And, you know, the whole, like, OpenAI GPT-3 dataset and GPT-3-like models that they came up with are very fancy and allow for some very cool stuff. But if you don't expand it and don't evolve it, it will just, you know, produce stale code essentially, right? Especially in uh, languages as dynamically evolving as JavaScript, for example. Uh, can it reverse a linked list? Yes, sure. I think I was already a uh, reverse uh, linked list. I think that was already in the uh, language JavaScript. What? <laughs> Oh, it actually suggests me a button that reverses a linked list. Okay, I think it confused by my button there, but if I do that, uh, no, I don't want an author, just give me a, a thing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So um, reverse a linked list in two seconds. So there is three implementations here, yes? Uh, what is it, reverse? Why is there three implementations and why are they called differently? So this one, does what current had previous null while current. Yeah, okay, so this is a reversal. This one is something else. <laughs> Not even increments. This is the counts values? I'm honestly not sure what those two do. But uh, yes, it can uh, it can reverse linked list. Uh, do a bogo sort. I mean, I'm guessing yes, because that's also a pretty common task, right? Okay, there's some licenses coming in. Uh, maybe it needs a bit more. Yeah, there, there's, there's some functions. 
So maybe if we do const bogus, I guess, wait a second, function bogus sort. So maybe that, there you go. Okay, I don't even need to type it. There you go, done. <laughs> Yeah, so those kind of things are, um, the only thing is that I'm not sure if it's, you know, for the better or for the worst. While this, of course, works, majority of time, what you want to do for things like reversing a linked list or uh, doing a bogo sort, that's a good question as well. Is it a bogo sort or not? Uh, for a... Yeah, that does not look like a bogo sort, actually. <laughs> So, but my, my point is that you normally don't want to do this, like as in, you know, hey, I want to do algorithm X, so I'm just going to let Copilot write it. First of all, if you don't know what the algorithm does, that that doesn't look like Bogosort, honestly. I think you are absolutely right. It's probably not it. Um, is, there, is there anything else? Yeah, it only has those suggestions, and I don't know that they are correct. But anyway... So what you want to do is rather use existing libraries, right? Because they will have optimizations, they will have tests, they will have all the other things that you typically want to have in your code. And uh, doing like using Copilot without tests is um, pretty risky, I would say. <laughs> uh, do you think this opens doors for individuals, companies to eventually create style guides and fit that into Copilot to narrow down results? Uh, I mean, that's so basically you could, um, I, I think this is more of a question if GitHub will go that route, right? So I think they could. So um, let, let me just let me just speculate here for a second, right? So GitHub is is going to provide Copilot for free to most of people who will just use it like, right, you know, me or you or whatever, if you just use it at home, if, even if you just use it for work, it's probably going to be free. But I think what you're suggesting is what they're going to try to sell, unless they're just going to basically charge for, you know, the whole Copilot thing, which might also happen, just be like a, you know, pay us or include it with GitHub Pro or whatever. Uh, but I think that probably selling the uh, fitted models and then the trained on specific code base, the ones that understand company and understand their styling, formatting, rules, variables, whatever, this could be a really good like, value proposition. Like if, if, if this is a thing that would, you know, save developers how many hours instead of like writing this stuff themselves, I'm pretty sure majority of companies would just buy that. But then again, you know, it might be like, this is a pretty complex thing to implement, right? Even, even for GitHub. So I don't know if they would go that route. It might be easier to just say, hey, you know, Copilot is included with GitHub Pro. So once you buy GitHub Pro, you will get Copilot done. Right. Uh, I'm again. This is like we're talking about hypothetical things that might or might not happen, and I'm really, really curious to see where they will take it because the technology is absolutely really, really cool. My code is so bad that Copilot can't even write it. <laughs> uh, that's uh, that's fair. It's um, like the the interesting thing. So what I think is curious is that. Copilot produces code, but it does not guarantee that the code will work or even run, right? So it doesn't even guarantee that it will compile if you take like Golang or Rust or whatever. So what would be cool is to see um, a Copilot extended to include the automatic generation of an execution of unit tests. Actually, a good example. Can we generate a unit test? Um, test footer. What are you doing? Okay. It should render footer. Will it generate the? Yes, it will. So you can generate, so it can generate the unit test, right? And this is, okay, very stupid, very simple test. But again, you know, should render footer is a very simple test description. But basically what it could do is not just generate a code, but automatically generate a test for it. Obviously, they would need like extending the model and training it a bit more to generate additional data and then to run the test to ensure that it actually works, right? But that would require a comprehension of your tool sets, of what kind of stack you're using, what kind of test setup you have, which is a bit more complex. And again, this is probably something that you can very easily sell to the enterprise customers because just imagine, you know, if you're working for the company and 
they say, hey, you don't need to write tests. You just use copilot model that we have and it will write tests for you. Like, man, salt, just wrap it up and pack it for me. Like, man. but if, if, if that's going to be our reality, I'm all in for it. Like, even if it doesn't, uh, even if it doesn't, um, what do you call it? Even if it doesn't produce the full test, if it give me like a scaffold and then I can fill in the logic, that will be enough for me. You have, a, have you tried generating a Notion client with it yet? Oh, no, 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 I'm not going that route again. No, 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 no Notion. Not until they release like a stable API, at least until they claim it's stable. Um, you know what, I wa what else I want to try? I want to see uh, how it will fare on ExoFrame. So we have this monorepo with ExoFrame. I am probably going to regret opening that uh, because I don't know how, how fast or slow the indexing is going to be in it because it's relatively large. There's like four packages in here already. But essentially, um, we got this. Yeah, so we got this thing. This is the client. Yeah, I wanted to. So we got the client, right? And I the client is finished and it's sort of already documented as you can see there's like js doc everywhere there are tests all of that stuff is working and there's a CLI that i started writing but actually didn't finish because the um, import jsx and the inc don't actually work with the es6 so they are not es6 compatible which means that i cannot run them which is a bit of a shame but um what we could do instead is we could actually try I'm also curious. Yeah, I'm also curious how we'll behave if we're if we're gonna say okay, so this is not a type module. I'm gonna just remove the type module from here. We're gonna say okay, so this is actually this is actually const, and this is actually require. Right. So if I try, if I say okay, so we are gonna say uh, do, 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 require um exoframe client okay so this is this auto suggests come from typescript so it's not like you know something fancy say so we got the list deployments right and we hey okay so we say maybe i should do it in a new file let's do it here a list Let's call it list.js. I'm just going to copy all of that. So we don't need that. Okay. So say we want to list const render deployments. Okay. No, that's not deployments. All right. And then, okay. I guess it needs some context, right? So const deployments await. Right, so this one's an endpoint and token. By the way, I have written the ExoFrame client with pure JavaScript and I use JS doc for documenting all of the types and, you know, parameters and everything. As you can see, the TypeScript um, auto, some, uh, auto suggestion works incredibly well, right? So, um, okay, uh, so list all deployments yes why not get endpoint from end variable let's do it this way uh, that's that that's kind of amazing okay sure get token from config file will it understand this no it still gets it from wait a second no 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 no, no. why are you suggesting the end var cons token await fs Okay, so first of all, I don't know, does it complain because it's not Okay, const fs require fs. So we say, okay, we got the file system here. And it doesn't suggest anything. So let's try invoking the synthesis. There you go. Okay, now it suggests it. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, it even does my favorite console log over here. Okay, cool. Um, right. Well, yeah, so it's basically there are words and there are like, but I'm not sure if those are even the copilot bugs or my system bugs, but when it does suggest the right things, it's actually mind blowingly good. 
Um, okay, but this is not, why did you change it? The signature of the function is complete. So it, it actually lost the, it lost the signature of the function while auto suggesting, right? So the function takes in the object and one of the things is endpoint and the other one is token. And for some reason it doesn't understand it. So it seems, seems like, I guess, majority of people use again. So go into the legacy code when there was no destructuring, you didn't have that. So you couldn't do the object with aliasing and everything, which means you would use positional arguments, which is not as nice as, as named arguments basically. Right. So yeah, so there, there are, there are caveats, but, uh, it is, it is very, okay. So qu question, 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 question. Um, so we say endpoint takes token, right? So we, instead of getting them, we say we get them from somewhere return deployments. So we return deployments. Um, can I, can it generate the documentation? Here's the question options. Um, I mean, <laughs> I don't know where this is coming from, but I guess close enough <laughs> endpoint. Uh, what, 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 endpoint to connect to token token to use for authentication. Okay. Yeah, sure. That's uh, actually close enough project to list deployments for is it my comments from my project wait a second is it just taking it from the list of deployments no it doesn't have no eh, okay so no okay i used a different phrasing here so okay yeah sure and uh render all deploy okay so it's not not all the time but it actually does manage to suggest even the comments correctly which is uh Pretty damn cool. Module exports render deployments. Well, okay, we don't longer need a fast thing. Yeah, sure. Um, so in this case, we're gonna say <laughs> Yeah, okay, some of those suggestions don't make my I mean, I guess Normally when you're writing clear, you're going to be getting the input from, again, it's the same thing. Like, right? so it kind of understands the context, but kind of not. So it understands that I'm trying to execute things as a part of command line interface, but it does understand that my function, which again, the TypeScript actually catches it, takes the endpoint is clear flags. I don't even know if that's a thing. So is it, yeah, okay, so now it kinda got it. Uh, why is it named? There should be token there, but okay, you know what? That's, that's fine. <laughs> Even in the current state, this, this saves a whole ton of time. So it's way, 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 like very far away from being perfect. I don't know why you keep suggesting me render from string. But this is, yeah, this is still far away from being perfect, but uh, man, if, if it's, if it's not impressive, then uh, I don't know. I would say this is really, really impressive. Um, let me see. So what else can we try? Notion. You wanted Notion, huh? <laughs> you wanted me to suffer again, huh? Okay. Um, let's see. Well, let's try one more thing with Notion and uh, maybe wrap this up here. So this is an official Notion. We got official notion, right? So this was the thing. I, yeah, right. So one of the things I hate writing is fetch requests. I keep forgetting how they work. So execute post request with fetch. Const fetch post, let's call it this way. URL body fetch post headers. All right, you know what? Now this is impressive. So like, if you work on code that is very close to what you typically see in a code base, it literally generated the whole function for me, right? So I didn't even have to write them. It, it, it even inserts the notion token in there. So it understood because we have this authorization header, it passed it right there. So instead of, of doing that, I mean, I guess I could just, yeah, so, or uh, we could just copy paste it and they say, okay, 
Execute gets request with yeah okay there you go. Okay, fetch gets. Okay, you know what I want now. Okay, so basically once you start writing in the context, it seems to understand things a lot better, right? And then yeah, so this is send requests. I mean, I guess it I could have yeah, so this is basically the same function but split into two. But this is very impressive. Right, so what else? Uh, da, 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 we got these pages. So what if we say like map pages to names? Can I do that? Page by name, yes, this is exactly what I want. Page by name, but this is gonna be pages map. Uh, is that correct? It actually is correct. Now, this, okay, so <laughs> uh, it's kind of a mixed bag, right? So it's basically when it understands what I want to do, it feels like it's reading my mind. But when it doesn't, it just produces random code from public repos, basically, right? Or randomly concatenated code, I guess, from public repos, which is not always perfect. But uh, as a technical preview, this is mind-blowingly good is what I want to say. I am very interested to see how this will change or not change the way I work, you know, on daily code, basically, if it will change it at all. Um, but yes, this is, is there, is there anything else guys you want to see me try? Uh, if not, we can just wrap it up here. I think we tried enough things. Uh, so it can document code, it can write tests, it can extend and, expand functions as you want them and uh i wonder like what if i just ask it for suggestions without writing anything okay so this is well it does so we got the get page get database get databases it suggests get page by t oh it seems like somebody already wrote some notion stuff is it children yeah <laughs> seems like it already found someone or i guess there was a project in public space that already implemented notion api and it actually gets stuff like get pages by tag by tag and data but this is really cool like the fact that it can do that without me even providing context is insane like honestly uh, i think we'll get a better feel for it when writing real production code yeah yeah, I mean, not not even like real production code, honestly, it's just uh, next time we're going to be doing a live stream and coding something, I'm, I'm not sure yet what and when, uh, we're going to be using Copilot there and uh, we're going to see how that works out. But honestly, the first impression are, first impressions are really, really good. Like when it works, it's it's it really feels like this thing is reading my mind, which is mind blowing. When it doesn't, yeah, it's it's quite wonky, but I guess that's expected, right? So it's like it cannot be always good. Like there's just not, unfortunately, the state of the machine learning and AI in 2021. Maybe in 10 years, we're going to get something that can, you know, help you write code and be like your real pair programmer colleague or whatever. For now, it's just a really, really good text or like snippet suggestion, I guess. And as we've shown with the BOGO sword, it actually is not, not always produces <laughs> things that you actually expect it to produce. I wonder how many broken algorithms would it actually produce? That's also a really good question. Like, you know, it's, it's already occasionally produces snippets that do, well, I wouldn't say opposite, but something completely unrelated to what you ask it to do. But yeah, so basically be careful if you're using it and always proofread the codes it's, it's like i wonder if it puts less mental stress or more mental stress to use that rather than you know writing everything yourself because reading code is a lot harder than writing it right i'm kind of pondering okay you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna need to see how that works out in the in the real life and how it's how it helps me when writing the actual production code but uh, the first impressions were really good. So let's let's see how that develops. Again, I'm, I'm very curious to see where the GitHub will take it as a product and how they will 
price it, what they're going to sell, are they going to include it into GitHub Pro, they're going to sell it separately, how, how expensive it's going to be, because if this thing is expensive, I'm not sure there's going to be a lot of people who are use it. Like, it's great, don't get me wrong, like, right? When it gets the suggestions, it's awesome, and it will definitely save me a few minutes, but if they're going to charge like 10 bucks per month for it, I'm not sure I'm going to pay for that. Like, I'm, you know, I'm... I don't know if that's that's going to be worthwhile. If it's part of GitHub Pro, though, I might even consider just subscribing to GitHub Pro purely because of, of that. <laughs> because so far, I've been, you know, majority of my stuff is open source, so I don't feel a need to get a GitHub Pro account. But if this is going to be one of their offerings, I might just as well subscribe because this is just, uh, yeah, this is just really, really good. I'm hoping it will help me when looking for reference examples when learning for a new library. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, so that's, you know what, let's, let's try uh, one more thing. So what I want to see is what if you try to use a very niche and a very obscure library that is not very popular, right? So you obviously are going to get like a ton of suggestions for things that are popular, right? But Will you get them for something that is relatively niche? Huh, let me think. So what library can we use? Um, can anyone name a, a niche library? I mean, I probably can use one of mine that are like relatively small or something. Like Outstated or XMQ that are very, very tiny. And there's probably like a few hundred people using them in general. Um... Yeah, you know what? Let's try. Let's try RxMQ. That's. I think that's niche enough, right? So that's like I don't honestly remember when was the last time I used it. So okay, create new channel for posts. Does it even generate anything? Or will it just be like, hey, I don't know what the hell you're trying to do. <laughs> um, I, that looks like parts of readme that I have on the official library demo. And this is parts of tests. And those are kind of what I expect to see, but also kind of not. Well, okay. Oh, there you go. Channel posts. Okay, so subscribe I, it, yeah so the full pane with suggestions is a bit weird it seems to produce too much code when you want like a few lines subscribe to channel with posts okay right uh well, <laughs> i'm not sure why it wants me to unsubscribe immediately but uh yeah that's 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 fine we can work with that. Is that actually the signature of what you get? I honestly don't remember. Subscribe next. So you push it and uh, what do you get data? Okay, so you actually get data is parameter not destructured. So this this is the way. Yeah, so it's kind of you see, you know, once you pick something more niche than well, I guess anything relatively popular, the suggestions you get are not as good basically cleanup channel yes set i don't know why you want to time out well okay at least you caught the unsubscribe thing correctly and it suggests <laughs> yeah this is definitely something from the uh from the readme or somewhere because this should this is not a markdown why are you suggesting me the triple brackets it's yeah, it's a bit wonky. So essentially, if you're if you're using something very niche or very spe specific that doesn't have a big community and a lot of public code, expect stuff like this that are not exactly reliable, basically. But yeah, even then, that's that's pretty good. So I'm kind of curious to see where they will take it, where it will go, and uh, how they will develop. The first impressions, at least using it with popular libraries, are pretty damn fantastic, to be honest. Like the, again, the the first example we did, the uh, GraphQL generation was the most mind blowing one. The fact that it managed to write a query correctly and put all the properties in there is just insane to me. 
But yeah, I guess that's it from my side. So thank you guys very much for watching. That was a nice, um, almost one hour-ish stream. So hope you um, learned a bit about the GitHub Copilot. Maybe seen something interesting, maybe not. If you want to get it, you can essentially go to Copilot github.com and sign up for the uh, program. I believe they are picking now people who are active-ish on GitHub basically. So if you have an active profile, you should be uh, able to get in relatively easy. But yeah, there we go. That's it from my side. So thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the show and I see you next time whenever that might be. But uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. So have an awesome rest of the day or rest of the week and I see you next time.